Hello everybody, welcome to this online course on programming and algorithms. So throughout this course we're going to look at how to create computer programs, both in terms of how to design them and develop them. And we'll design them using algorithms and we'll develop them using a programming language. So just to make me happy, I always like to just cover the, the course description in some detail. So as we can see, the module is introducing programming algorithms and we're going to use a, a structured programming language approach. So there's a lot of different types of programming languages. You have functional programming languages and object-oriented and stuff like that, but we're going to use a language that will work as a procedural programming language. And just to say, if you're doing this course, it doesn't. we assume you don't know anything about programming at all anymore and the goals are to teach you how to program and be familiar with some commonly used programs and algorithms. So on completion of this module, the learner will be able to design and write computer programs, use a, a text editor and an IDE or integrated development environment, um, divide the program into different parts or modules as they're called, test computer programs and then implement some commonly used algorithms or recipes for programming. In terms of the kind of syllabus we'll be covered, covering, we'll, we'll look at what a program is, what's source code, what's machine code, what's editing, what's compiling, what's linking, and how to use an integrated development environment. We'll look at basic numerical types and character types. We'll look at how to read from the screen and write to the screen. We'll look at conditional statements, if statements, and case statements and things like that. We'll look at iteration while loops and for loops and things like that. Uh, we look at structure programming, functions, parameter passing and, and stuff like that and data structures. We look at basic algorithms to count, to search, to sort, maximum and minimum. We look at uh, different ways of doing those sorts and we look at testing and debugging and how to document. If a lot of the terminology I'm saying here doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. We'll cover it throughout the course. I just, for my sense of satisfaction, I like to just say out what we'll be doing during the course. In terms of the assessment, this is 70% uh, exam based and 30% for your assignment. So let's introduce programming. If we had our way, the computer would get us to type everything in binary because binary is the way computers understand. They understand ones and zeros. They don't really understand anything else. And historically, computer programs were written in this way, they're written in binary. So if you look at something like the Jacquard loom, which was a programmable weaving loom, it essentially had cards, like cards you could put in, like punch cards that had holes or not holes, and they were representing ones and zeros. So that's how computers like stuff. They like it as ones and zeros. Unfortunately, humans aren't good at strings and strings of ones and zeros. So Eventually, after a while, people created a language to help bridge the gap between what would, would be considered um, understandable for a computer and understandable for a human. So the first effort at that was called assembly language. If we called binary a first generation language, then we call assembly a second generation language. So it's a 2GL and assembly languages that were any number of them they were generally tied into the hardware. So if you were using Motorola hardware, you'd use Motorola assembly language. If you were using Intel hardware, you'd use Intel assembly language. Nonetheless, this assembly language stuff is just too hard to, to grok, really, too hard to understand. So uh, in, after a while, people started creating higher level languages, so third generation languages that are much more like English, much more easy to understand. And this is an example of a programming language, Python, and in Python this is what computer code looks like. Just to be clear, this is supposed to look like English for human beings. As we look at it, I know it doesn't quite look like English, but it looks a lot more like English than 11001001 does. So it's an effort to create a language that is, as I said, somewhere in between what a computer can understand and what a human can understand. So I might go into, let's say, Notepad and type in this programming language code. Then I'll run it through a program called a compiler that converts it from the, the, the programming language, in this case Python, into binary. Why do I compile the code? I compile the code so that the computer can understand what I'm doing. So the purpose 
of compiling code is to convert it from what is understandable by humans in this 3GL into binary, which the computer can understand. So we either compile or link code. Linking code means it's approximately the same thing, so that the computer can understand it. And in Python, for example, Python has, a, instead of writing your code in Notepad, it has what's called an interactive development environment. And its interactive development environment is called Idle. And in Idle, it, its IDE, you're able to write code, same as you would in Notepad, but as we can see, it colors different words that it recognizes as being important and it gives you clues and hints as to how you'd write the programming language. So that's really helpful to have one of these interactive development environments because it allows you to write code and spot errors as you're going along. So then a key concern we would have, or the key issue that we want to think about, the key tool we're using is an algorithm. So an algorithm is a series of instructions. If we think about if you're building a house, you need to draw a blueprint. So the algorithm is the blueprint for the program. Uh, if we think about music, a musical score is an algorithm for a, a song. If you look at a musical so score, you can't necessarily hear the song, but it tells you how to execute the song or run the song or make the song happen. If we look at a knitting pattern, one plan, one pearl, two plan, one pearl, whatever, it doesn't knit the clothes for us, but it tells us how to knit the clothes. If you look at a recipe, the recipe doesn't cook the food for you, but it tells you how to cook the food. So an algorithm is the design of the system, but not the, the system itself. So for us, we're going to use uh, we're going to describe our algorithms not using musical notation, not using knitting pattern notation, not using netting recipe notation. We're going to use uh, something called pseudocode to describe our algorithms. And then from pseudocode, we'll convert it into a programming language of our choice. And algorithms allow us to break things down, essentially. So we decide what the problem is, we analyze it, then we develop the algorithm in pseudocode, and then we convert that algorithm into a particular programming language. So it is worth saying, for a lot of the examples we'll be doing for the first while, there'll be almost no difference between the algorithm and the programming language. The same way if I did a blueprint, if I was an architect and I did a blueprint for a box, the picture of the box is going to look exactly like what you're going to build, whereas if I do a complicated house, it's going to be a lot more difficult. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.